ladies and gentlemen, you know, for probably the last four years, I've been talking about opioids and the effects that it has, not only on the drug addict, but the children that ultimately end up in foster home. You know, and a lot of times these drug addicts will lose their children because of neglect. You know, it's hard to be a drug addict and really be a good parent. It is a really difficult thing for a lot of people. So this came out on CBS News October 21st, 2019. The opioid plague is forcing more kids into the foster care system. And you would be shocked at how many of these families don't step up for these kids at all. They don't want these children and they end up being in the system until they reach the age of 18. They are simply not. Now, um, many black people are stepping up and taking white kids in as foster children. You know, because the foster care system said they do not have enough people coming forward to take these children in. So, believe me, they're talking about a strain. It's always been a strain on it since this whole um, plague began with the opioids. And it has gone downhill from there. But I'm going to go ahead and play this video on CBS News. Let's see. It'll probably play some lame-ass commercial for My prescriptions used to be really expensive, but then I went to GoodRx.com. You put in the drug you're looking for, and bang, you've got half a dozen or more choices in front of you of pricing and locations to get it. I have good insurance, but with GoodRx, I save even more money. Go to GoodRx.com and check it out. Four major drug companies reached a last-minute settlement today, avoiding the first pandemic. The companies are McKesson, Cardinal Health, Amerisource Bergen, and Teva Pharmaceutical. They reached a settlement totaling $260 million with two counties in Ohio. They're the first of nearly 3,000 plaintiffs across the country that are suing Big Pharma over drugs that have killed hundreds of thousands of Americans. Tonight, Dean Reynolds reports on the forgotten toll of the crisis, the growing number of children in foster care. Delaney, you go get the cones. When we met Suzanne Valley two years ago, she was busy fostering five children, all from drug-ridden homes. Four of them, her own brother's kids. I know he loves them. You know, it's hard to explain that kind of love because if you really, really loved your children, you would do everything in your power to get off of the drugs. Today, she has a sixth child in her and her husband's care, all due to opioid abuse. Is that getting worse? I think it is. I do feel terrible for the people that are drug addicted. It just breaks my heart. I just wish they would stop. But what breaks my heart more is seeing all the kids without their parents and all that baggage that's going to hurt them as they get older. What are they going to be when they're adults? It's kind of hard right now. Kids like Jack. When we met him two years ago, he was living at this children's home in Ohio. Now 16, he's still there. My life wouldn't be the same if I didn't live here. I'd probably end up just like my parents. His mother and father, both addicts, have had their parental rights terminated. My mom, my dad, that's me when I was little. Today, his brother and sister are also in foster care. Have you basically given up on ever living with your parents again? Yeah, I I mean, I can't. I've thought about it. I love my parents to death, but I'm doing a lot better than I would have ever been doing if I still was with my parents. That's how I look at it as. That's a rough thing to say, you know? Yeah. These are just a couple of stories. There are millions more about the pain the painkillers have caused. From drug makers to doctors, consider this. Two years ago, there were 76 kids in foster care here. Today, there are 127. Dean Reynolds, CBS News, West Union, Ohio. Part of the cost of this epidemic. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end result. But you know what? We're familiar with this during the crack epidemic. 
the same thing happened. It was a little different though. I mean, not quite as many children ended up in foster care during the crack epidemic. A lot of grandparents stepped up to the plate to raise their grandchildren because many of their parents, if you remember the street, uh, you know, the crack addict was considered a criminal. So many of the parents ended up behind bars and the children ended up in the system or in many cases in the black community, the grandparents stepped up. And when they should have been retiring and enjoying their life, they were actually raising their grandchildren. And I remember um, being in church and there were so many women up in age, you know, just in that one location in the church that were raising their grandchildren. It was so many. I, I will never forget that. So history is definitely repeating itself again, but this time not with the same people. And you see many of the foster children today that are there due to opioids are ultimately going to be there until they reach 18. You know, it is just not as many people in foster care, you know, or even taking these kids in like it was years ago. There were many people doing it years ago, but not quite as many today. So, um, as you heard, you, you saw the children, you saw the one woman that have six children and some of them were her own brother's children because he's an addict and it, it is a terrible thing, but you know, this opioid plague is historic. It's historic because this is the worst addiction America has ever seen since its inception and it's not going away. It's not. You, you have millions of people out here on opioids, you know, and there are so many people that don't want help. They just want to be high. They want to be on the drugs and they don't care if children are involved. You know, somewhere along the line, they don't care that they have children to raise and they will walk away and neglect their own children for the sake of getting high. So right now there's a lot of lawsuits going on that you guys probably have heard about and, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many lawsuits they keep getting into. It is not resolving the problem, but you know, you had Trump that claim he has slowed the uh, the um, opioid epidemic down. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. This drug addiction is going on stronger than ever. They have never figured out a way to even get these people off of the drug because, you know, if they can't get a prescription, they're just going to run out to the streets for the heroin. And the heroin is another form of opioids. That's all they're going to do. They have arrested doctors and some nurses that were over prescribing out here. It's still not slowing down. I think this time around, they got themselves in something that they know deep down inside, they just simply can't resolve. They can't. And they know this. It, it has gone on for 20 straight years with these opioids. And there's no end in sight. And I was looking at some of the different states that were talking about they were overwhelmed. That is still going on in the country. There are many states with their foster care system and they feel overwhelmed and they're begging people 
to step up for these children and folks are just not doing it. I guess they just simply don't want to take on any more burdens. And I can tell you straight up, as the recession starts being felt in this country, you really won't have anybody stepping up because people are going to be looking out for their wallets at that point and what they can do economically for their families, you know, and it's a shame. But we saw, like I said, we saw this during the crack epidemic. These kids are just going to have to be a ward of the state until they become of age. And then hopefully they can move on with their lives and either further their education or get jobs and start taking care of themselves. There's really not too many other alternatives out here for them if no one takes them in. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.